Rob Rumbler. This man is about to be dropped the height of a 12-story building. <sighs> all to explore our experience of time. Time drives every second of our lives in ways we can scarcely imagine. But what is time? This is the quest to understand time and our place within it. It's a journey that starts with cutting edge discoveries into what makes us tick. and ends with the mind-boggling implications of cosmological time. It's a journey that reveals something extraordinary. The more we understand time, the more we find that it is time that makes us uniquely human. Time is the greatest force in our lives. It drives us all. We are all obsessed by time. We never can seem to get enough of it. Time is invisible. Time is untouchable. And yet time rules our lives. As a physicist, I've spent most of my life studying time, and I know it's one of the greatest mysteries in all of nature. We all know that time is out there, but we can't see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, or smell it. So how does it exert such power over our lives? In this program, I'm going to find out. This is the story of personal time, the everyday time that shapes us as people. It's midnight on Newport Beach, just outside Los Angeles. I've come here to experience a remarkable feat of timing. And sure enough, and sure enough, they're coming right on schedule. These fish, called grunions, are arriving here on this beach, on this night, within a precise two-hour window. There are masses of them already. This is truly amazing. I've never quite seen anything like this in my life before. Hundreds of them on this street. This is remarkable. Within minutes, the hundreds have turned into thousands, all arriving right on cue. Somehow, somehow, without a compass, without a GPS system, without a wristwatch, without a calculator, they're able to navigate the Pacific Ocean. They know to come right here to Newport Beach, right on time, and it's almost like clockwork. And the reason they've come here is to mate. They have just two hours, just two hours to carry on the species. This is really an exquisite sense of timing that they have and they get it right every single time. Time is a force of nature. 
that these creatures have to obey. And if they don't obey, then they simply don't reproduce at all. So time is more than simply an abstract concept. To them, time is life and death. If they get their timing wrong, then they simply vanish as a species. The Grunions achieve their remarkable timing by following cues from the moon and the tides. But it's not something they think about. Their timing, however precise, is purely an instinct. But surely, we humans are different from the Grunions. We do what we want, when we want. We are separate from the animals. We think about time. We know about time. Our timing, surely, is driven by choice, not instinct. But is it possible? Is it possible that we might be hardwired and not even know it? In 1962, one man decided to find out if we were unknowingly controlled by time. Michel Sif, a French geologist, went to live in a cave for two months, initially with the aim of studying a glacier. As a young geologist, I decided to stay uh, two months uh, to study this ice, you know. And at the beginning, the study was only geology. And then I have the idea of my life. I decide not to take a watch uh, in the cave. I decide to live without any time cues. The decision to live without a watch, completely alone, was the beginning of a groundbreaking series of experiments. I decide to live following uh, my uh, feeling of uh, hungry, my feeling of going to sleep in the cave. It's always dark. Then your body follows his own sense. Isolated in his own world of time, Michel reported everything he did to a surface team. And I decide to call them when I wake, when I eat, when I make pipi, and when I go to sleep. Déjeuner, menu, it wasn't long before Michel had completely lost track of time. As soon as you pass the first night in the cave, you are lost in time. You are uh, yeah, lost, completely lost, and you don't know if you have slept only one or two hours or if you slept ten hours. Despite the fact that Michel had lost track of time in his mind, the data on the surface began to reveal a pattern. Even after months of isolation, his body continued to follow a roughly 24-hour cycle of sleeping and waking. Astonishingly, something was controlling his timing from within. The main result of the experiment was that human as a body clock, independently, completely independent from the Earth's uh, cycle. Michel Sif's experiment had proven, for the first time, that it isn't only animals who are slaves to their body clock. For us, too, time is an inbuilt biological mechanism controlling our behavior. It makes sense to me that our sleeping and waking would be controlled by the body clock. But since Sieff's experiment, scientists are discovering that time plays a much bigger part than we'd ever realized. 